So this map is called Zorishan, right? Uh, Saritsin, Saritsin. Yes. 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 So the first thing to note about this map is it is a small urban map. It's going to be very infantry focused, but as we can see, there's already a tank on play. And this is going to play a big part in the map, as you see as we go along here. That I believe you can only get one tank per, per faction, is that correct? That's right. Each team only gets one tank, uh, so it's going to be a critical part of each match. And as you can see here, this is a very unique tank. This is not, uh, this is not a Russian tank. Russians were known for their armored cars during World War I. Uh, this is a, is a Mark V. It's a British tank. In 1919, they started to support the Russian Revolution. And one of the things that I do want to point out on this particular map is the fact that there are only three flags. You know, this is actually not common in Battlefield. So a very, very small map. And uh, a lot of action, I imagine, is going to be happening around that B site. That's right, yes. And as we know, and for those who don't know, uh, Conquest is all about capturing those flags. That's your objective. You need to go capture those flags and get those points. Uh, the kills will also count for you, but uh, this, is, uh, this is what you're, what you're going for. Yeah, this, right is the, uh, this is the, bat the, the classic Battlefield 1 mode. And actually, just on screen now, I think this is one of the new weapons that's coming with this expansion pack. Yes, this is the Perino. And it looks like we also pulled out the Obrez. Uh, but yeah, this is the Perino. It's, uh, it's also dressed up in the new skin, the Fabergé. Yeah, it looks really good, that one, actually. And that's a set across all of the new weapons that are coming, right? That's right, yeah. It's, uh, it's something that we're showing off a little bit. It's, in, uh, it's, it's to kind of honor one of the uh, Russian uh, designers. Oh, that's cool. And now we have one of probably the best uh, shotgunners up. It was uh, Jack Frags out there, but now we switched over to Darkness here, who is uh, once again going to be using that new LMG. And you can see him trying to get as much ammo out to his uh, teammates there to cap over onto the C flag. Now, this is something that uh, we have seen in previous games where, you know, that B site's so hard to take that you do have people going in for the flanks. And uh, now it's going to be interesting to see how the, uh, uh, the light guard actually uh, come back after this. Yeah, because as you say, the, uh, the Red Army falling behind here a little bit, but the two uh, capture flags on the outside, A and C, they're sort of like the gimme flags, right? And uh, yeah. the fight sort of focuses around that B center point. Yeah, taking the flags close to your headquarters is going to be the simple task, but uh, good, good teams are going to start flanking around and trying to take those points. The most contentious point is going to be B in the Cathedral of Light in the center of the map. You can see some of the uh, the more flatter areas around the Cathedral of Light here, but obviously a lot of cover as well. There's some some rudimentary trenches there. There's some heavy cover, uh, lots of like broken wood and barbed wire as well. So there's lots for sort of infantry to hide in. Yeah, absolutely. You did mention the rudimentary trenches, and that's something to note. On the Eastern Front, they didn't spend a lot of time uh, digging those trenches like they did on the Western Front during World War One. So that's showcased here. So uh, we've also seen a lot of the basically destruction buildings that are kind of torn down. How much extra, or, uh, you know, destruction can the player have as, uh, on this map? Oh, that's a great question. Actually, not a whole lot. There's going to be some. You'll see a little bit of what we call micro-destruction. But uh, the, the hard cover that we're seeing is stuff that we wanted to keep in game, keep the game balanced, make sure that you stay safe when you're weaving in and out to get to your objectives. Now, I think I'm right in saying here that the, uh, the A capture point is uh, heavily infantry focused, right? <laughs> yes, it, it is. It is within those ruins of the, of the former neighborhood, and it's going to be hard for a tank to get those lines of sight. But as you can see there, there's a, there's a sort of a large roadway through the middle of it, but if they try to branch off down maybe one of the smaller alleyways, which they can get down, that, but there's infantry everywhere. It's going to be really tight, and you might find yourself with a, with a mine in your way. See down here at the bottom of the screen, one of the machine gunners using the old Mark V tank that's buried in the ground as cover there. It's a really good use of cover. That's an indestructible piece right there. Right now, though, a massive wave coming in from that B site to try and push uh, those players back into their alpha flag. But this is uh, pretty interesting right now because we do have that bottleneck that you were talking about, but it's kind of on the reverse. Uh, they, they can't really break out into it. That tank maybe needs to get a little bit more aggressive, try and push on in there. But uh, they are just having one heck of a time here. Yeah, the Red Army are trying to push in, but as you could see in a couple of shots back, the, uh, the White Guard are sitting in that first line of trenches. There's about seven soldiers in there just sort of keeping this tank from pushing forward. You can see with the explosives coming in on the tank here. They're kind of keeping it at bay because too many infantry around the tank, it, it will take it down. That's right. Looks like we had just entered into the uh, Cathedral of Light here. And we're hopping on the window. <laughs> Yeah, but here we can actually see inside, and this is something I think we should talk about because it's actually a beautiful building inside there. Yeah, a lot of work was put into that building. Uh, it's, a, it's a shame that most players are going to be running around quite hectically during the, in there. Uh, if you have time to stop and just look, it's, it's really beautiful. Uh, here we are with the, uh, this is the double barrel shotgun. We sh should be able to get a little bit of action with it here. That's right. Um, I'm running thinking that you can fire both shells at once with this thing if you want to. 
Yes. <laughs> That's like a double dose of pain right there. Absolutely. And it's fantastic for taking out the cavalrymen, cavalrymen as well. But uh, right now, oh, we have another new gun right here on screen. This is from the medic class, I believe. That's right. It's the Fedorov Avtomat. And this one is really unique in that it allows you to be able to choose your firing type. So you can go uh, burst or you can go single shot. And we are starting to see right now the score kind of pulling Ooh, apart. Oh, nice shot. That's a nice takedown. Yeah, but we can see the white guard pulling away just a little bit in terms of score here. And as you said, they've, they've held the majority of flags, two out of three, for most of the game so far. And the Red, Ar uh, the Red Army tank wasn't really pushing too much towards the, the, the B point, the Cathedral. And I think that's going to be uh, something they'll need to do if they want to try and take it back. Because the tank having the presence is going to allow infantry to move up around the outside of it. And right now we can see a pretty big battle happening over here onto that C side of the map. Yeah. Looks like they are going to be able to defend it for now, but uh, they are getting a lot of pressure on that, that particular point. And uh, for now, looks like they will be able to hold it off. A little bit of push coming in onto the Cathedral, but you can just see how difficult it is, especially without any good tank, which uh, potentially could go down here. But, oh, nice shotgun there. As uh, That's going to be Jack Frags. Kind of come out, he does. Gets wow. the knife. Beautiful job. That was a nice takedown. That was good. Close quarters with the shotgun. Couldn't quite finish him off. Whipped out the knife. Job done. One thing to note about this map is it is actually a critical point in a, a critical place. It's in the port of the, the Volga River. So anyone who controlled this point also got to control the, the, the route of supplies. Uh, so this was something that the Red Army really wanted to take and, and control while they were trying to fight their way to, uh, to control Russia. Well, right now they're facing a, a rather big push from the White Guard. As you can see here, we've got some tank action going on, but they seem to be separated at the moment. There's so much infantry action going on in the middle that they don't want to push too much and then no. lose the tank. Yeah, the vital tank's... part of the battle. The tank is really trying to hold on here. Yeah, the Red Army really struggling to get any point. Now almost going to get three capped, and we all know that if you're getting three capped in Conquest, the game could end fairly early. So they really need to, to rally back and get onto that point as quickly as possible. I think they've solidified the A capture point now, looking at it again. It doesn't appear to be contested right now, so perhaps they sort of settle back down again, but they really do need to make a push for that cathedral if they want to try and claw their way back in. I think that's the, that's the key to this win right here. Anyone who controls B is going to have that, uh, that victory. See here doing some damage against that enemy tank, all the explosives going on. This is why the infantry can be so dangerous, especially when it's just one tank on its own. Mm. You know, this is the only vehicle that your, that your team's going to have. You really need to try and protect it from enemy infantry. Yeah, it is really just a fantastic sight right there, looking at it from above. You do have some cavalry trying to come in, maybe do a little bit of harassment there, but this tank is literally just, he doesn't know what to do. He's already pushed all the way back to the out-of-bounds zone, but uh, we are going to be seeing him slowly but surely kind of inching his way up. He's about half health, so he does need to be careful, but, uh, you know, th this is really interesting too because we haven't really seen too much from the other team's tanks, so maybe they've kind of just focused on purely just pushing them in terms of infantry. Oh, here we see an actual battle going on at the cathedral right now. You can see the flag is being contested. Both sets of infantry are in here trying to battle it out. And as much as it looks just like a building on its own, it is a really large building. This is a great shot here. You can see the full scope of the building now. Yeah, it's absolutely insane, the, the, the size and scope of this building. Not only that, but you do have some vertical gameplay with it because one of the one of the entrances where it's it's crumbled at the side where it's been hit by a shell of some sort, you can actually get up onto sort of the first level of, of buildings around the top there. Yeah, I actually think that's going to be one of the keys to victory too for this point. When, when you can get to high ground, you can control that point. One of the things I do want to point out though is that the uh, Red Army is starting to come back. They were capping over there onto that Bravo point. They have about four minutes left, so it is possible for them to come back and try and take this win here. They just need to hold on to these two flags, but a massive fight now happening for the center. And uh, you can see right now the White Guard starting to win that back slowly but surely as uh, the new weapons are being used to quite effect good effect here. And uh, this is just chaos right here in the middle <laughs> of the map. Just as we suspected when we were building the map, that this was going to be the most contentious area. Lots of people pouring in through the doors and trying to get, get access to this point. And as you say, like that, you could see just across from each other, there's two sort of entrance doors. And there's one at the rear and at the front. You can almost jump out from the top floor as well. So there's lots of different ways that infantry can get in and out of this building. So whatever team is in there has got to be careful that the enemy team doesn't try and come and take it straight back. Yep. At the same time, though, the team in the center has to be careful not to get too concentrated because if you look there, they were taking their back flag. So they yep. need to make sure they kind of spread out, kind of get a little bit uh, even throughout the map, and then uh, defend that way. But 
you know, right now the uh, the flank is going to be working for, I believe it was the Red Army, yeah. trying to go ahead and secure those two caps. Yep. You can see here, the, yeah, the Red Army have got control of the A capture point, and I believe they're contesting the C capture Working point. on C. Yeah, they're yeah. working on it. Ooh, and we got a flame trooper right here. So how many kits do we have for the elite classes? Yeah, we actually have three elite classes on here right now. So you can get the flame trooper, and that's around the outskirts of this area here, the perimeter of the cathedral. Uh, you may also find a sentry kit here. We also have a water-cooled uh, LMG uh, sentry kit that's, uh, that's uh, uh, something that will spawn on your headquarters if you control all three points. Oh, okay, so there's a third one further away from the edge. Look at all the enemies here. Oh, oh just here we go. Damage. He is going to roast them nice and toasty. Picks up one, <laughs> picks up a second one potentially here. And he just did a fantastic job of clearing out those players. Will have plenty of health as well, and he's going to re-engage. Fantastic go. job from oh, here Jack we go. here. <laughs> a great use of the flame trooper right here. Close I'm guessing quarters. this is what you guys exactly thought would happen with the flamethrower. Like, we'll put it near the cathedral where it's going to be most effective, right? Right in these hallways. Just a perfect use. <laughs> this, is great. this is just not even fair right here. He's just going <laughs> just and running train on these guys. But uh, we got two minutes left here on this particular map. A little over 100 points down for the Red Army. Right. The white, the white guard is pulling away here. They seem to have dominated very much from the start, and I think perhaps the Red Army just suffered a little bit from not being a little bit more aggressive at the start, trying to contest the Cathedral earlier on, maybe try and gain a bit more of a foothold in the match. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can see right now just so much chaos. You have the above action there from the second level shooting on down. Uh, so many players just trying to scramble and get up there as quickly as possible to clear it out. As uh, we're still following Jack here in the Flame Trooper, now we're going to be passing it on to Thick as uh, we will be pushing on in once more. Hmm. No, it's just good. not going to make it. No. This is this is the problem. Like because the uh, the white guard are sitting inside the cathedral, the red army are having a horrible time trying to actually get in. Yeah, but it looks like we've got the tank up close. It's just taking a lot of fire damage here. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing damage to the tank by hitting it with the flamethrower. I was about to say, I was like, there's no way he's going to take out a tank with a flamethrower here. It might yeah, just happen. But he it could possibly happen. do right that from the sides, but not able to do so. The tank is kind of baffled as to what to do right here. Uh, he is getting a couple of kills, and but. This, this is just not look massive good. craziness going down. <laughs> we're down to the, almost the last half a minute here. Yeah, we're getting really close down to the wire here. The Red Army's still trying to break in to the Cathedral. They seem to have made a little bit of headway, but they are contesting the flag now. Uh, but it may be too little too late. I think we might be seeing yeah, a little bit of that uh, writing on the wall here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, we do have a little bit of life left here in these squads. They're gonna try and do everything they possibly can. It's all for pride right here and now. Can they get this B-side? If they Nine. can just own it. Oh my just God, yeah. Six seconds left to go before they we are gonna be ending it. out here. I think Two they may have it. Oh, I don't think they quite got it. And, and it looks like that was it. That was a, a victory for the white, the white guard. guard. The white guard took that one. But that was that was awesome. Watching the cathedral battle, that was really, really good fun. And it just showcases like how powerful it is.